Hello, my name is Fatima Pishradian. I'm a PhD student at Interactive Audio Lab at Northwestern University. I'm presenting our paper on learning to separate sounds from weekly labeled scenes. This is a joint work with Gordon Wishern and Jonathan Lowe. The work was performed while I was an intern at Mitsubishi Electric Research Labs. In this video, we present our method for supervised audio source separation using weekly labeled auditory scenes. At a high level, we are trying to address the problem of single-channel audio source separation. Audio source separation refers to the task of isolating individual sound sources in the recording of a complex auditory scene, also known as a mixture. As an example, consider a recording made in a busy street. The task of a source separation system would be to isolate sounds such as car horn, street music, and human speech given the mixture. Separation via mask inference is a common approach to solving the source separation problem. In a typical mask inference approach, first, the time domain mixture recording is transformed into a representation with a higher level of separability. The time frequency representation domain is most commonly used for masking based source separation, which will also be used in this work. In this domain, the mixture energy at each time frequency bin is distributed between different sound sources using weighting functions known as time frequency masks. In the final step, the time domain version of each isolated source is estimated by applying an inverse transform to the corresponding mask representation. In a fully supervised separation scenario, the time frequency representations built from isolated sources are used as targets in model training. We refer to such targets as strong labels, as they provide information about sound classes at the time frequency bin level. Supervised mask inference methods, especially those using deep neural networks, have become very popular over the past decade, mainly due to their successful performance in areas such as speech enhancement, speech separation, and music separation. These methods typically require a large dataset of isolated sound sources to construct training targets for estimating the time frequency masks given the sound mixtures. However, obtaining the isolated sources that compose a mixture may be expensive or require complicated recording setups. In the extreme case, some sounds may never be recorded in isolation, such as the sound of a bird in the woods or the sound of a specific machine part that only happens when a machine is running. In cases where isolated sources are not available, it is also unrealistic for humans to use signal processing tools to manually label the audio at the level of time frequency bins. In this work, we aim at training a separation system with labels that are easier to collect such as information on the type of sound events and the time of their occurrence in a given recording. Estimating this type of information happens to be the goal of a whole other branch of audio research called sound event detection. We take advantage of this technology to bridge the gap between strongly supervised and weakly supervised audio separation. Sound event detection refers to the task of predicting the start and end times of a sound event and identifying the category to which the sound event belongs. In this illustrative example, the SED system receives a time domain signal, which is a field recording including three different types of sound, car horn, jackhammer, and dog bark. Each colored bar in the system output shows the activity of one sound class over time. Since the SED system makes class activity predictions for each spectrogram frame, we refer to this type of labels as frame level. A high-level presentation of our separation system is demonstrated in this block diagram, where the input mixture and estimated sources are presented as spectrograms. The training targets, however, are frame level weak labels, which cannot be directly compared to estimated sources. Nevertheless, if we have a good SED classifier, we can use it to convert the estimated source spectrograms into time domain source activity predictions that can be compared directly to frame level weak labels. Our model is thus comprised of two main components, a separation system and a sound event classification system. In our experiments, we pre-train the classifier on audio mixtures and fix its weights when training the separator. With this setup, 
the isolated sources are no longer required for separation training. In the situation where we only have information about the type of sounds and their presence or absence within a clip, we refer to labels used for training the SED classifier as clip level. The use of clip level labels are of great interest as they are clearly the most basic type of information that can be easily collected for separation training. In this work, we also train a classifier using only clip level labels and use the classifier to train a separator. Now we present the objective function used in training our system. Let us first consider training the classifier on mixtures using the binary cross entropy loss function. In this equation, H denotes the binary cross entropy function, L sub i tau the true frame level labels for the i source at frame tau, and P sub i tau the predicted frame level class activities for the i source at frame tau given the input mixture X. The classification loss at frame tau of the mixture is the weighted sum of binary cross entropy terms over all n sources, where W sub i tau denotes the loss weights for the ith source at time frame tau. The reason we weight the loss terms is that there may be sound classes with very different activity levels in a dataset. For instance, a dataset of urban sounds might include rare sound events such as gunshots, as well as sounds that are active over long periods of time, such as street music. In such scenarios, the weights should balance the class contributions to the total loss. The weight values are determined based on prior probabilities of source activation computed from training data. In this equation, gamma sub i denotes the activation prior probability for the ith source and a sub tau the set of active source indices at frame tau. When training the separator, the classifier is applied to source estimates, not to the mixture. The classification loss for each source estimate includes the associated true class label and zeros as true labels for all other sources. The implication of the second loss term is that the classifier should penalize the presence of any source other than the ith source in the ith source estimate. Our principal goal in training the model is to achieve high quality separation. If only the classification loss is used in separation training, the separator would produce masks that solely focus on the most discriminating time frequency components for classification without fully reconstructing the entire source. Therefore, we enforce the output signals of the separator to add up to the input mixture. The overall loss when training the separator is the weighted sum of classification loss and mixture loss, with alpha being the tunable parameter that controls the contribution of mixture magnitude term. So far, we focused on the formulation of the frame level objective function, but we note that the objective function can be easily extended to the clip level case. The separator network in our model is composed of a three-layer BLSTM stack, each layer including 600 nodes in each direction, followed by a fully connected layer that outputs n masks with the same size as the input mixture. The frame-level classifier is a CRNN with three two-dimensional convolutional layers, followed by a BLSTM layer, and a fully connected layer mapping the BLSTM output to frame-level class probabilities. The clip-level classifier in our work is a simple extension of the frame-level classifier. We add a max pooling operator to the CRNN output for each sound class to perform frame-level to clip-level mapping of class probabilities. In our experiments, we used audio excerpts from Urban Sound 8K dataset. Five sound classes were used for data generation, including car horn, dog bark, gunshot, jackhammer, and siren. The table on the right shows the distributions of number of sound sources per frame or per clip in our training dataset. For example, 30% of mixture frames contain two sound sources, and 10% of mixture clips contain five sound sources. It is important to emphasize again that the classifier network is trained only on mixtures and its weights are fixed when training the separator.
Training the two networks jointly from scratch results in degraded separation quality, as the classifier learns to forgive the separator's mistakes. These scatter plots show the separation results on the testing dataset for separators trained using strong labels, frame level labels, and clip level labels. Each panel shows the amount of SISDR improvement versus input SISDR for all testing examples of one sound class. When going from strong to weak labels, there is a decrease in the number of points in the higher end of SISDR values. Other than this behavior, the distributions of weakly supervised results are very close to the strongly supervised results. The box plots here present a more detailed version of the input and output SISDR distributions for all classes and label types. Frame-level labels clearly yield better results than clip-level labels in general. However, the distributions of the results for both weak labels appear highly overlapped, and they both overlap reasonably well with the strong label distributions. The mean and standard deviation for each distribution separately and all distributions combined are presented in the table. Now let's listen to the output of our separation system that was trained using frame-level labels for an example mixture from the testing dataset. Mixture. Separated car horn. Separated dog bark. Separated jackhammer. Although the estimated jackhammer doesn't sound as clean as the other two sources, the signal still seems to be isolated to some extent. In this talk, we presented an approach to audio source separation using weak sound class labels, where a sound event detection classifier is employed as the principal metric for loss calculation while training the separator. Moving forward, we consider extending our weak label separation objective to systems based on other types of masking, such as phase sensitive or complex masking. We could apply our method to more realistic mixtures containing unlabeled sounds from other classes. We could also train our system on other sound types, such as speech or music, or on datasets with fine grained labels, such as bird songs of different species. Thank you for your interest in our work. For further details, please refer to our paper.